What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update as well, talking about what I ended up doing today on the 22nd of May in terms of my trades, as well as breaking down, taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in and that I want to trade for the rest of this week for the rest of this month and heading into the June month of 2019. And before we start, guys, I want to let you all know that my allergies are absolutely killing me today. So if I sound kind of funny, just understand that my nose is running, my eyes are literally, you know, watering, you know, the, the grass and the pollen here in New Jersey is absolutely through the roof today, which is killing me. So if my voice is affected, I do apologize. That is the reason why though I kind of sound sniffly so without further ado guys now that I got that little announcement out of the way let's just hop right into it so today the S&P 500 the SPX the 500 largest publicly traded companies ended up closing the day down eight dollars and nine cents down 0.28 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 100 points today, down 3.39 percent uh, at the close of the market. And the NASDAQ here, guys, down about $4.05 uh, percent here. But let me just double check and see if, that, if that's what it closed at or if that's what it is at right now due to this being the future. So let's see, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. Where was the NASDAQ? The NASDAQ was... Let's say about 7437, which is about 11 points higher from where we are now. So if that is correct, what I'm seeing here, guys, the NASDAQ ended up closing the day slightly green today, but I'm not entirely sure if that's 100% correct because, again, this is the future. But nonetheless, guys, not too crazy of a day in terms of the overall market movement today, right? Within a 0.3, 0.4 red day for the SPX and the Dow and the NASDAQ, was pretty much flat. Not much crazy movement from the previous day in terms of the NASDAQ. So now that we got the closing prices here, you know, what we ended up doing in terms of the indexes, let's break down some technicals on the overall markets very quickly so we can see where we could be potentially headed, what's been going on over these past couple of days. And so I can give you guys some insight here from what I'm personally seeing. So we see the clear support right here on the SPX, $2,800. Over the past couple of days, we've noticed the SPX has gone up to nearly $2,890. Um, if we look here on the 20-day, one hour, we can see that. We went up to nearly $2,890. We might have been there for literally a couple of minutes, then we we pull down from there and we're now trending down once again on this 20 day one hour chart but you may also notice that we're trending up at the same time and let me explain what I mean by that and what I'm seeing with these two little trend lines that I'm about to draw for you all nope let me not clear the drawing set let me clear there we go okay so take a look at this we're making higher lows at the same time that we're making lower highs, right? You notice what I just showed you guys here? A low at 2800, we just talked about that. Higher low at 2820, higher low at 2835. And today, with the close of the market being kind of, again, flat and end on a little bit of an upswing, we ended up closing on another higher low at about 2853. So what that's telling us is we're on a little uptrend here. But notice how... We've, over the past four days, have also been on a descending lower high pattern. Look, high at 28.90, we just talked about that. High at 28.80 is the next high. High at 28.66, and with the red day that we had today, the high is at 28.59, roughly 28.60. And what that did is it put the S&P 500 in this wedge that we're seeing. So for tomorrow, it's very basic here what I'm waiting for. Which way are we going to break? Are we going to break the outer or the upper rather side of this wedge, this resistance we're seeing? Are we going to break that? If we do break that, that's going to be a bullish pattern, a breakout 
bullish pattern. We may see more green in store if we do break that. But let's say we break the support here, right? We notice the support, the higher lows, right? We notice that. If we break that, that is going to be a bearish trend or a start rather of a of a further bearish trend here over the past uh you know really to continue this pattern that we've been seeing over the past couple of days and that's going to be the SPX looking to push to a potential lower low, maybe if we get under $2,800. So that is the scenario that I'm personally seeing right now on the S&P 500 on this 20-day, one-hour chart. On the five-day, five-minute, we can see it a bit better, right, in terms of this lower high, these lower highs, rather, that we've been seeing. We're no we notice the S&P's just been closing a bit lower every single day over the past five trading days. Hopping over here to the 184-hour chart, guys, we noticed we talked about this in the previous couple of videos S&P held the 180 SMA support very nicely we retested it a couple of days ago and now again we're in that wedge on the shorter term charts and you can see it here on the longer term charts as well and tomorrow is going to dictate which is what I'm waiting for you know are we breaking out? Are we coming back? And if we do come back, I'm going to be looking on this longer term chart to see, are we maintaining this 180 SMA as a support tier? If we break that, right? If we break the support of the wedge and the 180 SMA on the 184 hour chart, that could lead to much, much more selling. And in my personal opinion, that's a key technical break, literally two key technical breaks. And we could be heading down big time if that does end up happening. So those are my thoughts on the S&P 500 right now, guys. Let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Right off the bat, we're noticing, just like we've been over the past couple of days, we're still trading between the 25500 level of support and the resistance at $26,200, putting us in a 700-point range, a 700-point window that we've been trading in. That's pretty, that's pretty clear to see here. If you guys look at my cursor right now, you can see the support resistance we've been trading in this level now we're noticing as well we're actually under both of the moving averages the smas that we talk about on this channel and that are very common in the use of technical analysis and those are the 180 sma this yellow one and the green one which is the 50 sma we're noticing the candlesticks over the past couple of days that we've been recovering slowly Really, they're still maintaining under that 180 SMA. That is a worrisome sign to me, and that's telling me that the Dow could be weak at this area, right? And we need to see either a breakout of the 180 SMA resistance for this to be a bullish pattern, or we need to see a clear-cut rejection, and you can see it a bit uh, better here on the 20-day one hour. We need to see a clear-cut rejection and a break of this trend line that I just drew out, right, for the downtrend to really continue. But just like the S&P, over the past four trading days, lower highs have been being made. We can see that. And higher lows at the same time. So we're in the wedge on the Dow, just like the S&P. Keep an eye. Are we breaking to the upside? Are we going to the downside here? And what happens from there, right? Those are things that you need to take into account when deciding what to trade. So that's really it for the Dow Jones. Nothing crazy. These patterns, most of the time, guys, you know, they're very, very similar across the three major markets. I know sometimes there are days where the Dow may be down 200 points while the S&P might be up, right? And we saw that. What I'm thinking off the top of my head right now, we had a day that might have been when Boeing was going down really heavily. That was a time when uh, I think the Boeing crash that day, the Dow was actually red while the S&P was green. I think if you guys follow the markets on a day-to-day -day basis, you know what I'm talking about. I think that is an example of the markets being different towards the close and their patterns being different. But for the most part, I would say like 80% of the time, right? I would think the market's patterns in terms of some uh, basic technicals are are kind of similar. They're not exactly the same. Don't get me wrong. They're not exactly the same, but they are kind of similar. So the NASDAQ here, just like the Dow, this one's trending below all of the major SMAs, the 50 and the 180. It's under the EMA line right now as well. This is a worrisome sign and it's telling me 
the Nasdaq's getting weaker. We're selling off, right? And, then, and this bearish pattern is still intact. We're noticing the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. That's a bearish pattern trend if we're hopping over here to the 20 day one hour chart we're trending under smas and ema and the ema on this chart as well bearish cross on the 20 day as well 50 sma crossing below the 180 sma we are also in a wedge pattern just like the s p and the dow jones guys what did i tell you the patterns are Kind of similar, right? We're noticing hot, low at 72.90, second low at 73.60s, third low at 73.80, and the low today, 74.30. Notice how those lows keep going higher, hence why we call them higher lows uptrend pattern and we're noticing the downtrend here high at 76.30 next high at 75.75 roughly next high at about 74.71 and the high from today about 74.50 and notice how those highs are getting lower hence why we call them uh, lower highs and that is a descending pattern putting the NQ the NASDAQ in this wedge that we are seeing right here so where are we breaking tomorrow that's what we're watching are we breaking to the upside downside that is what's going to help us determine the trend and what we're going to be doing tomorrow um, in terms of the NASDAQ here so that is uh, the overall market update for today's video guys important pattern today is the wedge where are we going in the overall markets that's going to determine a lot for us so now transitioning into the trading update of today's video for those of you all part of the chat you saw that i talked about 3m this morning yesterday i talked about 3m and i actually uploaded a video earlier today if you guys didn't check that out talking about 3M and 3M is a stock that we talked about and broke down for it being at a level where it hasn't been at in, in over three years. And I don't want to talk too deep into this because I did hop into a full on video breaking this down. But just to give the gist of it, 3M is at a level where, again, it hasn't been at since the 2016 year back here in October, uh, October 24th, 2016. We notice we're seeing a green candlestick forming on top of this level, that support on the three-year one-week chart. And we talked about over the past couple of trading days how 3M has basically been holding that support very nicely. On Monday, we literally tested it five different times. Tuesday, we tested it twice. Today, we tested it pre-market hours and at the market open and we launched right off of it completely breaking this bearish pattern to the downside that we've been seeing here on the five day five minute chart we're also noticing here on the 20 day one hour chart we're slowly breaking out of the 50 sma resistance looking to hold that as a support here and this is actually a very good sign for me to want to enter into 3m as a swing trade so let's break it down in terms of what i ended up doing you recall literally a minute ago i said said 3m pulled back and retested that support today that longer term support at roughly 166 and this is when i ended up scalping 3m for a very quick i believe it was under a one percent profit literally once i saw it bouncing off of the support again from yesterday and, and the long-term support that we saw i entered into a position i believe 166 90 166 80 and like you guys can see you know, once we broke out of the resistance from the previous resistance after some consolidation here, that was literally only uh, a 0.56% move. And that's actually where I ended up getting out of this trade. I got in on the low, popped up, and once we saw the break out of the resistance from 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I figured it was a good time to just sell and lock in those profits. And once I noticed how... We were actually maintaining the resistance as a new support, as we can see on this closer term chart. Let me show you all here. It's pretty clear to see. Let me draw this trend line for you all. You can see, look, resistance at about 167.75 right here. We pulled back, popped up, and then we ended up holding that uh, old resistance as a new support 
for a very good amount of time. It was about, how long was this? Like 20 minutes, right? And then we started to aggressively pop out. And then once I saw that breakout, I took yet again another position in 3M because of the bullish breakout here. And guys, this was absolutely crazy because once we did break out from there, this one just kept on going. If we look on the percent all the way to the top, it's not that crazy. It's a 1.66% uh, move to the upside. But think about if you're playing this one, let's say, with $20,000, right? $20,000, 10% of $20,000. What is that? That's a $2,000 profit. And 10% is 2,000. 5% would be 1,000. And if you're looking at, let's say, a 2% gain here, what would that be? 2% of $2,000. I think that's roughly... Oh my gosh, off the top of my head, it's like two, three hundred dollars. So it depends what you're trading with. If you're trading with a smaller account value, this may not be so much of an attractive move to you because if you have one thousand dollars, you get one percent. What did you make? Like a, a ten, like ten dollars? I mean, that's good, right? That's good that you're that you're experiencing. Um, you know, that's good that you're experiencing the practice of making one percent, but. People always ask me, like, how are you only making, you know, 1%, 2% on your trades? And it's because I'm trading with a larger account value. And I'm sure just a lot of uh, people out there, you know, have these questions and they're like, how do, how do I make, you know, good money in the stock market? Well, the whole idea is, you know, starting off with a small account value and then growing that account value over time being, in my personal opinion, using that, that conservative strategy of about 1-2% per trade, and it's not going to be a lot of money at first, but what it's going to do, it's going to teach you discipline, how to be conservative, and how to conserve capital, which is the most important thing, and then once you get your account up to $10,000, you're making... 1%, that's 100 bucks, right? And if you're making 1% on 20,000, that's 200 bucks and then 2% would be 400 bucks, right? So that's just how it works, guys. And for me, you know, if I'm making if I'm taking a position on 3M 20 grand, you know, I'm making anywhere from 3, 4, 500 dollars on that little trade here. So pretty that's pretty much it, guys. So, you know, I, I ended up just doing a quick little scalp Getting in again on this breakout, grabbing about another, you know, 0.75, I believe. It wasn't anything crazy. It was like 1% roughly. And it was about a 1.5% day on just strictly trading 3M. And now to transition into, you know, what I'm personally watching for the rest of this week, 3M is actually again looking to break out on this 20-day one-hour chart like we like we saw earlier. I want to see a break into the 170s, uh, 172, 173, 174 level, and for us to break the 180 SMA before taking a potential swing on this one. And just like I talked about in that previous video, you know, I think it's really uh, offering great opportunity once we get that confirmation of, of the break of the resistance and for this one to really show that bullish upside that it has once we do see that you know this could be a very big opportunity on the swing side you know on 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 you know day trading on the day trading side you know this one does offer a lot in my opinion all we need to see is that break so another one that I'm watching for tomorrow guys is the gush and drip duo drip is actually one we talked about a couple of days ago i'm kicking myself for completely missing this trade today guys i know some of you traded it in the group others missed out as well and it's just one of those days where i just simply missed out on one of the bigger moves on my watch list which again kind of sucks but it's okay you know i'll come back and I, i'll bounce back from it and this is what i'm looking to see i'm looking to see if i could bounce back um, not really bounce back from a loss, but just bounce back from missing the trade, quite frankly, by trading Gush if we do end up getting a pullback on Drip. And for those of you guys that don't know, Drip and Gush are two ETFs. They trade based on XOP. XOP, whenever this is going up, Gush is going up. Whenever it's going down, Gush is going down down and drip is going up so we saw that 3.8 percent sell-off today quite a big sell-off on this etf that pushed uh drip up 
11, 12% or something like that today. Pretty, pretty crazy move in uh, drip. And we can see some consolidation on XOP at the support of about 28.65. And if we're judging this 20 day, one hour chart, if we do hold this support, guys, and we slowly start to truck up and uh, really just complete this horizontal pattern that we've been in, you know, this could be a very big bounce back move tomorrow on Gush. And just for that reason, guys, Guys, the fact that we're consolidating here, potentially looking to pop back up. Gush is the number one by far ETF that I am watching tomorrow. This one offers about 10%. You know, this could very well sell off more. I'm not saying this is the bottom. I'm not saying it's going to bounce here. All I'm saying is I'm watching it to see if it does, and I'm watching it to see what it's doing pre-market hours. If we're noticing, you know, it's trending up into the 875s, 870s, 880s, this could signal to me this might be a runner today. And especially if we're noticing XOP is coming up aggressively, this one offers about 10, 12% if I'm not mistaken, right? You can see that 11, 12, 10. So that's a pretty good one. Gush, G-U-S-H. And of course, let's say we break that support, we sell off more on XOP and Gush, Drip will continue to be a great play. So for me, those are the two top ones that I'm watching. Uh, you know, Gush, Drip on the ETF side. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, 3M on the stock side here. I'm watching also the potential sell-off on the overall markets. If we do get a sell-off tomorrow, I'm looking to play SQQQ. And this is one that I talked about in my four ETFs I trade during volatility video. And this one's going to be good in my opinion. Again, if the NASDAQ in general is selling off, especially SQQQ because it tracks the NASDAQ 100. It's a 3x leveraged ETF. Let's say the NASDAQ sells off 2% tomorrow, 1% into this longer weekend that we have or, uh, or uh, through these next two days into the longer weekend that we have you know, this could move anywhere from 3 to 6% to the upside if it does end up happening. We're noticing we're maintaining the 50 SMA kind of in a wedge as well, which makes sense because it tracks the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's in a wedge, hence why the SQQQ ETF's in a wedge. We just need to see, are we breaking out? If we break out, I'm going to be trading this one. And on the flip side, let's say markets do break out to the upside. Let's say the NASDAQ is breaking out to the upside. TQQQ is going to be one I'm watching, which is a 3x leverage GTF. It's pretty much just the inverse to SQQQ. It, it goes up when the NASDAQ is going up as well. So some other things that we should go over on this video, you know, the VIX has been dropping from 14, it's at 1475 now. Volatility has really died down over these past couple of days. We can see in the past literally like six, 10 trading days, it's gone from 24 down to about 1475. The price of gold right now is 1273.90 90 cents in the red today. Crude oil is at 61.35 right now, down about seven cents. We're noticing natural gas actually descended down more today. It's at 255. It's up. 0.31% here, I believe, after hours. We're noticing, uh, what else here? Um, you know, Apple had a bad day today, down about $3.82. We noticed Facebook was in the green, Amazon was in the green, pretty much all these other tech stocks, but Apple did pretty poorly. So I actually want to ask you um, a question. What do you guys think about Apple? I'm thinking it's getting to some interesting levels now where it may attract some longs to come in. Me personally, there's no way I'm buying Apple right now, but I'm thinking people that have not gotten into the stock quite yet, maybe they're considering buying a a, a couple of shares of Apple here. But another part of me is thinking, Many people are probably scared with the slowing growth in China and the trade war, which may push the stock down even further. So what do you all think? If Apple gets back into the 170s, would you consider building a position if you're not already in Apple? Let me know down below. What do you guys think about that? It's been getting hammered. It's down like 30 bucks here over the past couple of weeks. I would love to know what you guys 
think. So I'm going to end off the video here. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. Drop a uh, comment down below again. Let me know what you guys think. Answer that question if you guys want to. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. Free Discord down below. Free uh, Facebook group down below. The Strive Smart Facebook and Discord. Get in those communities if you haven't done so already. Instagram links down below. All the different stuff to stay connected is down below. If you guys want to be further connected, I'll catch you all in the next video. Go check out the one I uploaded earlier today. You'll find a ton of value in it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all you guys. Peace out.